Okay. Now, guys. We use the term square root all the time, right? Yeah. You guys use it. Your most familiar use of square roots is when you're doing Pythagoras, right? Yeah. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, yeah? Yeah. And you got a square root at the end. But too few of us understand where the term comes from. And you need to be aware that it exists beyond the square root, okay? So first of all, we're going to talk about why something is called the square root. All right? So what shape have I made here? A square. How do you know it's a square? Carla. All sides are the same, right? That's five, and that's five. Cool? Okay. So the whole thing is five by five. So how big is this whole construction? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. So the area of a square is length times width, which in this case is five times five, which is twenty-five. Now, here is where the term comes from. Twenty-five is what we call the square. Five is what we call the square. That's a two, you moron. S Q is the square root. Because when we take the five and we make a square concretely, not using numbers, when we actually build a square with five rows of five, we get the value for the square. So what you have to remember is the square is the big number and the square root is the smaller one. Now, I want to ask you a question. You have to think about this. Do not yell out an answer. What are there more of? Squares or square roots? A bunch of people went square, and then they waited a second, and then some other people said square roots, and a couple of those people saying square roots. Which is it? So theoretically speaking, Sam, you say there is an infinite amount of both. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. You're saying because there are infinite numbers, therefore there must be infinite square roots. Theoretically speaking. Right? Okay. In reality, which is their moral? Square. No, square, square. No, wait. Yeah, square, square. It is an emotional roller coaster because a bunch of people are just just tell us Myers, which is it? I'm going with square roots. It is square roots. Why? Amshuman gave us the answer, even though the reason, even though we had the answer wrong. Which is why are why are there more square roots? Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. You're on the right track with how you started that. Because every number can be a square root. Every number can multiply by itself to make a square, can't it? Yeah. One times one is one. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Right? But perfect squares. There is no perfect square between one and four, is there? Not that's a whole number. And there's no perfect squares between 4 and 9, are there? And then between 9 and 16. Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, because Sam is also correct. Because there are decimal perfect squares, aren't there? For example, 
has a square root. It is a perfect square, but it is not a whole number perfect square. Understand? So this comes back to that thing we were talking about at the beginning of the year. If I go halfway to Blake, will I ever get there? Theoretically, no. But in reality, yes. Right? Okay. So everyone's cool with that? Okay. So if I add these two, Do I have a square? No. Why? It's a rectangle because its length times width is now 7 by 5, which is now 35, correct? Yeah. So it, this guy, is not a perfect square. How could I make him a perfect square? What would I have to do? I'd have to add these guys, wouldn't I? Yeah. And then what would my perfect square be? Seven, seven by seven, which would be? Forty-nine. 49. Got it? Yeah. Basics. Whole numbers. We'll talk about decimals in a minute. Okay, so if I don't talk for about five seconds, you guys should be able to fill in this four, four, uh, sec eight section chart, yeah? A, B, C, D, there's eight sections. It should take you about eight seconds to fill it in. Just fill it in, Amsham. So we remember, the area is the square. The side is the square root. Okay? Picking up what I'm putting down? Read my mail, mow my lawn? Okay? So, what does that mean here? The square of a number is the number what? What do I do to get a square? I take that number and do what? Right. Is the number multiplied by itself. Now, how can I write that in math class? X times X is one way to do it. Or X squared. Cool? All right, now we're going to do a whole unit on x squared, on exponents, where we go way past just 2, because that's really where you guys are sitting with exponents now, right? Pythagoras. Okay, a square root of a number is one of what? It's one of the sides if we draw a square. Now, what do we have to remember about that? Perfect squares have rational roots. That is key. If it is not a perfect square, it doesn't have a rational root. I'm going to talk about that again in a minute. Because if you look at your next page, it's square root of non-perfect squares. Okay? Everybody good? Now the next thing you need to know is this. Squaring and taking a square root are what we call inverse operations. Which means... They have a place in algebra, which we are going to be doing again in a little bit. We're going to lead up to that. What do I mean by that? I mean this. 
x squared, right? If I square root x squared, I get x. Cool? What then happens if I... Oops. If I take the root of x and I square it, then what do I get? Then I also get x. Everyone cool with that? Yes. Okay. So now, again, you already know this. This is just to get the terms properly in your head. 4 squared is 16. So the root of 16 is what? 4. Four. 12 squared is what? 144. So the root of what? 144 is 12. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. Okay. Square root of 25 is? 5. And y? 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. Square root of 100 is? 10 squared. Great. Now, let me ask you this. All of those things we just wrote are half of the answers. Why? <sighs> If everything we just wrote were half of the answers, oh, we're actually not worried. Well, no, that, 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 and that are half of the answers. Who can explain to me where the other half come from? Sam. Um, I'm sorry? The squared sign. The squared sign. This? Not quite. Root 16 is 4. Right? Why? Why is root 16 4? What makes the root of 16 4? 4 times 4, four, times four is 16. Right? So by that logic, the square root of x must be x, whatever x times x is, yeah? yeah? Okay, so x and x have to be what? Same. They're the same, right? Yeah. So if this is half the answer, where else can I find something? that is the same to multiply together to get 16. 8 times 2 isn't the same. 8 and 2 wouldn't make a rectangle. Or square. 8 and 2 would make a rectangle. So I've given you half the answers. Think about it. What else in math is split exactly into half? Fractions have infinite splits. Why is 4, 12, 5, and 10 only half the answers? What if I draw one of these? Everyone hates number lines. What lives over here? Positives. What lives over here? Okay. Does that help? Oh, negative one fourth like the opposite of the number. Like like the, it's it's negative, 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 so how many square roots does 100 really have? Two. Two. Okay. Oh. All right. Now, before we go any further, we'll remember. For us, in this, at this point, we only care the square root of x. We are looking for the positive 
root, which we call the principle. Okay. Later on in this class and further into math, you are going to need to be mindful of both. Do you understand? Sometimes you will need to care about them. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you will need both of them. Sometimes you won't. Picking up what I'm putting down? So I need you to be aware that they do exist, but they have their place. And we're going to come back to them soon. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. So here is the explanation. You've got it all here. Why did I leave blank space over here? To remember negative roots exist. Okay? Negative roots exist. Put a star. So the square root of 100, to remind us, is technically plus or minus 10. Which one do we care about right now? Only the positive one. Everybody good? What's the proper name for the positive one? The principal root. Everybody cool? All right. Now, the next thing I got to tell you is, does this exist? Can't multiply them to get this, to get a negative, right? Yeah. For you guys, this is, I don't want to write doesn't do this, let's use the proper word, is undefined. You can't have it. Now, when you get to university, you will be taught that, yes, indeed, you can have it. They are what is called, are you ready for this? imaginary numbers. You are going to spend 12 years of math in high school and regular school learning about all the numbers that you know. Then you're going to get to university and they're going to say, um, you know all those numbers you know? There's a whole bunch of other imaginary numbers and they're going to teach you about those. Okay? I'm not going to teach you about those. Let's get you cleaned up and ready to go with the real numbers that we know. Yeah. Let's forget about the imaginary ones. Yeah, but when you go to Calculus 100 and your professor says, well, that's an imaginary number, you can go, ah, Myers told me they would come back and get me. Then you don't have to worry about imaginary numbers. Do you think I worry about imaginary numbers in real life? No. no. The only time you need to know what an imaginary number is is when you're reading like math code words oh, yeah. or funny jokes like this. Wait, wait, wait. Square root of 2 and the square root of negative 9. The square root of 2 meets the square root of negative 9. And the square root of negative 2 says, get real. Oh. And the square root of negative 9 says, be rational. Math jokes. Another one. Or this one. Square root of negative one. Uh, two cubed. That symbol. And that. The square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number, so it's i. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 8. That is the symbol for sum. Sum. Pi. No. Please. No, we have math to do. One of your parents could look on YouTube and say, what are you doing in Math 9? Eating pie. 
<laughs> making jokes that are on t-shirts. I don't want that to happen. I want them to, if they go on YouTube, to see actual math happening. Fortunately, they would have to watch like 16 minutes before they got to that. And they wouldn't, they would think, oh, wow, this, this oh principal square roots, that's pretty deep math. Oh, that's a good math teacher that boy has. And then you fast forward, I ate some pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, so can, can the microphone pick up our voices? It can. Cool. This microphone is pretty darn good. It does a good job. So my voice is probably on most likely. Most likely. It is? Okay. So, guys, I have 12 of them there, but I really recommend, I recommend, I cannot stress this enough, your lives will be made so much better in math in high school if you memorize the first 20. I put the first 12 there. I would memorize the first 20. So... You guys are honors kids. I don't care too much about you filling in the three times three. But I would expect you to know nine, 16. What's next? 25. Then? 25, then? 49, 64, 81, 100, 81, 100, 121, 144. Now, then obviously the roots, duh, you know them. Now, the next ones. 13 squared. 169. 169, 14 squared, 196, 15 squared, 16 squared, 256, 17 squared, 289, 18 squared, 324, 19 squared, 361, 20 squared, 400. I cannot stress this enough. I will never test you on it. This is not middle school. I will not write the chart and make you write it all out, ever, because it's not important to you in math. What it is important to you is when you get to complicated math and it needs to be simplified, think how easy it is to simplify fractions when you know your times tables, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's cool. You also maybe notice this pattern. Plus 23, plus 25, plus 27, right? Plus 30, 39, I wasn't doing it big enough. 39, so the next one's going to be 41. So 21 squared would be 441. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah, that's what I'm the, Yeah, the next one's going to be 20, it's going to be... 51. No. 41, the next one's going to be 43. So it's 484. Okay? All right. Now, now we get into where it gets a little weird. Fractions and decimals. Okay? Fractions and decimals mess with our heads. Because, yes, Jack? No. Yeah, you can. I don't care. You can put a You can become a good I player. don't care. <laughs> I do not, not teach not. math to get okay. rich. I teach because I like being here. I would teach anything. Right? Go go coach Buzkashi. I would because I like doing it. I like the teaching part. I don't care what I'm teaching. Now, Here's where it gets strange, because normally, when I square something, what happens to the value? It rises. It rises, right? Normally, 2 squared equals 4. I start with a smaller number, I get a bigger number, yeah? Yeah. But math rules are always rules. What does it mean to square? X squared means what in math? Because remember, there's only four math. Means x times x, right? Yeah. So what if x is a fraction? What's one half squared? Yes. One, half times one, half. one half times one half, which is what? One, 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 one fourth. fourth. Got it? It gets smaller. So one third. 
squared is what? One ninth. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yep. What about decimals? What are decimals? They're fractions. So the rules are the same. 0.5 squared is what? 0.5 times 0.5. 5 times 5 is 25. And how many decimal places do I need? Two. We'll cut it there. No homework tonight. Yes. Go. Yay.